So down in your module, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. The first is once you have your idea, and it sounds like that's what you have now to call, is I want you to call dibs on your, right here, call dibs on it. So go ahead and even right now you can put that in what uh, is your topic, okay? And that way nobody else can get it. So as soon as you have it. So but that's why I wanted you to put it in in advance so that I could come back and make sure you're on topic or on, on track, okay? So you'll need to get a new one, okay? And submit it. Okay, so that's important to recognize. Um, since your first assignment coming up is the draft of the outline, I'm gonna focus on that for today, all right? So um, if you're gonna do the extra credit, that's always a good thing, just make sure it's in by Friday, okay? The second thing is Friday night is going to be a draft of your outline. Now, we're doing a draft again because the final outline is actually going to be placed in your PowerPoint. Okay? So we always, when we do this professionally, when we do this in preparation for a class, we do a regular full sentence outline in a Microsoft Word document. Okay. Then what we do is we copy and paste the sections of our content into the notes section of our PowerPoint. So how many of you have used that in a PowerPoint before? Okay, right, most people have it. <clears throat> so right here is a sample student outline notes. And what I did was include her notes, her PowerPoint um, on the same document. And then what I also did was I included her actual delivery of the speech. All right, because when you're standing here with the podium and you've got your notes, all right, you want to be able to see um, where the notes are in relationship to the actual image that's being shown to your audience, right? So as you can see, this is going to be, your audience will only see this. Your own audience is only gonna see the title slide. <coughs> you, however, are going to see this part. So to take this section from your actual document, copy, and paste it into here, all right? And I'll show you how to do that next week. It's very simple. All you do is in a PowerPoint document, there's a section that you click on on the top that says notes, and this becomes like a dialogue box, and you just literally copy and paste what you type someplace else in there. Now you could type in there directly as well, okay? So when you are presenting, only you will see this. All right, your audience is only going to see this. So what will happen is you will send to me a PDF of your PowerPoint. I will have it so that I can upload it in advance on the on the um, on the screen over here. And then time for you to present. You will have your notes on your computer or phone, um, but you'll have the PowerPoint being projected this way for your audience to see, okay? So it's a multi-tech approach, but it works so effectively. If you watch the TED Talk speakers, you'll see that they are always looking down at the floor, okay? Not, not the whole time, but they will glance at the floor. At the floor is their big monitor, their computer monitor that has their notes. All right, in exactly the same way so that they can see where the image is and where their notes are and they can stay in sync and you stay uh, in, you know, together. Okay, so for instance, now we'll go to the next slide. All right, and her next slide has only a little section, but it says right here, the attention getter. 
Okay, so you can just copy and paste that part out of your document and put it in the notes. And then this needs to be a picture. Now I want you to notice that it's just a picture. The Miss K way of doing a PowerPoint is all about images, visual aids. This does not go up there. Because your, your audience doesn't need you if they can just read the PowerPoint, right? That's why uh, many people don't know how to do this correctly. Okay, and that's all the way through. So as you can see, same thing. In this section, the person talked about the relevancy, the credibility, just another image, right? Um, the, reveal the topic, you give the thesis statement, transition that goes into main point one. So that's an image that the audience is going to see while the person is now giving her evidence. All right, she's giving her evidence. Now I want you to notice that she has attributions for her sources. So according to this website, November 3rd, all right, and then she's going to give the data. So this must have a minimum of five sources, okay? So you think about it. You're going to have five blocks of information. You're going to have an introduction. So you should have some kind of a source in there, a quote or a statistic or something, all right? Main point one, main point two, and main point three. All of those should have at least one source, a different source, okay? And then your final is your conclusion, and then you should have a source there, okay? So you need five, you need five good ones. Now, you know, a quote, a brainy quote is still a quote, uh, and that's still a source, and that still counts, but you're gonna have to have some of the other data, real, rich research that you've conducted. Okay, does that make sense? All right. And so you can just look at this on your own. All the information is there. There's a review slide. All of it's just right there. And it, um, ask, you will get questions this time. Image. So on Sunday night, the only thing I want you to give me are, is the outline. No PowerPoint, no images, no pictures, okay? Just 90% of your outline ready to go. So that's gonna include your sources. Because when you come in, when I, when I look at it on um, Sunday, when I give you feedback, actually on Monday, my feedback is gonna really focus on the quality of your research, quality, and if you have the attributions. So honestly, that's where people have to go back in and take it from the 90% up to the 100%, okay? Or you might be missing a, a few elements like a relevancy statement or a signed post or a transition, all right? But now you know how to do outlines. You guys are pretty darn good. So you're at the point where you are just expanding your approach, okay? Now you should have three main points, three main points. How you organize those three main points are completely up to you. And there's different methodologies, okay? So one way is that you could do a chronology, like a timeline. But remember up there in the section for the uh, um, uh, for the main points for the body of your speech, I got a little line up there at the very top that says it's logical and fully developed. Okay, the logical is going to relate to what I'm hearing. I'm listing here. How do you organize the main points? Okay, so you could do it like a timeline, all right? 
But I'm going to tell you it's boring if that's how you do it about a person. So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, was born in this day and then got married on this day and then died on this day. Okay, boring. Don't do that. It may be logical, but your audience doesn't care. All right. Uh, but it might be important if you were talking about the progress of um, um, the Hundred Year War. I mean, it's a hundred years. If you guys remember back in your history, um, the Hundred Year War went for a hundred years. And so following like three critical periods of that war might be an interesting approach. Okay. You might also use geography. Okay, territory. So if you were talking about the encroachment of um, or the expansion of Nazism, then what you might do is to first talk about um, some key growth patterns, such as um, taking over Poland, um, moving up, um, taking over France, Belgium, and, and to the point of now trying to get into England. All right, so that's sort of the geography. There's lots of different ways that you can uh, do that. You could also do it in terms of a cause, effect, or as a problem, solution. All right, now be careful because this looks like there's only two. But what you would do is you might say that there are three causes for global warming. You see? So you're going to emphasize that. Or you could say global warming, all right, has these three effects in the next 50 years. We are projecting global warming to have these three effects on uh, food, on quality of air, on uh, whatever, okay? So it's the same thing with problem solution. All right, so there might be three problems with uh, police brutality. All right, the solution is here. Okay, so usually what happens is that these are your main points, your three elements will be your main points, and then your solution or the effect or whichever way you want to do that will be your conclusion. Okay, makes sense? All right. There are other ways that you could do it. You could do it in a um, list of priority. All right. The most important thing you should know to be successful in um, studying abroad is A. The next thing you need to know if you're going to be studying outside the United States is B. And then the third thing is C. Now, the priority could be going up or down. You, got, you can decide, right? Remember that your audience remembers the first thing you say and the last thing you say, and everything else gets blurry. So the priority is how you help one of those elements to not be blurry, is to really emphasize that, right? There are other techniques, but this just starts to give you some organizational patterns very similar to what you do in English 112. So this is not really anything new, all right? Okay, next what I want to show you is um, there is information here for attributions. Let's do this first. This is that three-part formula that I talk about all the time, that you have to have all three of those elements in um, your document, so that when you are telling your audience where you got something, every piece is there. So this is the who, this is the where, and this is the when, okay? So if you are forgetting and you're not sure how to do that attribution statement, 
then um, you can just pull up this document in Moodle and it'll give you a reminder. Also, the quality of your research. Be careful. Be careful. You want your research to be dot um, edu dot org dot um, gov. Okay, and if you're doing a country, all right, so like you might do dot uh, Uganda. Okay, or what have you. So you can do these, but be very cautious of dot coms. Dot coms will be okay, like if you're doing the BBC or you're doing uh, National Public Radio or International Public Radio, those are okay. But just be careful that you don't get really swayed into something that's highly opinionated. Okay, so keep that in mind. So, and don't use .net. All right. Okay. That's that. Um, if you're looking for a stage direction that you want to add, you could use what's known as the TTT approach, touch, turn, talk. Okay, this means that you are still talking to your audience. So if I'm here and I wanna go and point out something on my PowerPoint, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna virtually touch it. Virtually, not gonna go over there. Virtual, so sorry, okay. All right, but I'm always gonna make sure that I turn back to my audience to talk. Don't stand here talking to your PowerPoint. You see what's happening is that your audience doesn't see you and you're looking here, which is why we don't wanna have all that kind of stuff on there. No, we just want it to be a picture or an image. All right. Questions, you guys are so quiet. Oh, is it pretty easy now? Well, I think I do. Good. So, uh, when we're getting the information, we're talking about that's pretty much not .com on there. So, any resource that's actually, like, sort of how accessible, like any resource that's pretty accessible about the what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what if it happens to be a dot com? It, it can be okay, all right? But that's where you have to evaluate it, and that's what I will do to help evaluate it too. So if it's the BBC, all right, who's doing a report about this organization in Japan, that's going to be a dot com. Okay, yeah. there you are, BBC, all right. So um, that's going to be a dot com. Um, you know, um, CNN, that's going to be a dot .com, um, New York Times, that will be a, a dot .com, and those are okay, right? Uh, the Guardian, the Atlantic, um, you know, all of those, Wall Street Journal, dot .com. Yeah, if you think about it, because it sounds like it's doing a lot of innovation. Yeah, so it's all about innovation. Okay, okay. oh, excellent. All right, so um, how people feel and how it looks, those are great approaches. So what you're doing here is, I mean, it could be a problem solution, um, but it's also sort of a, a topical. All right. So let's say that, um, and, and it's a combination with the priority. So let's say self-esteem is one of the things they're trying to promote. All right. And maybe that's the most important thing. So that might be your main point number three. 
Okay, main point, you know, so the problem could be, um, what's the problem with it? No, they don't have no uh, farm raising. No. Too expensive? Yeah. Okay, so the problem is the cost. Okay, all right. Um, and the solution are um, what? Fundraising? What else? Um, that's the only thing I would say. It's like, it's not invested by a company or it's invested by a millionaire. Okay, so you need the philanthropy. Who are the big philanthropists? Okay. All right. So that's a way. Uh, crowdfunding. Yeah. It's the only, I never really thought about it, found out about it until I've seen it on here. Okay. All right. Well, at social media. All right. Um, yeah, I think there's some ways that you could look at, you know, the solutions. You know, the problem is that, you know, everybody wants them um, to help their self-esteem, to help their appearance, to help, you know, functionality. Um, but they're hard to get. So here are some solutions for people who are disadvantaged, but who need them or want them. I don't know. That's approach. It yeah. definitely would be an approach. Yep. Yep. This is good. This is what we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. And and so um, it started out of. Um, you just said that it started out of Great Britain. Yeah, UK. UK. All right. Um, it's only one. It's one. It's the okay. It's the only okay. So and and they may be a dot com by the way or a dot org. I don't know. So that'll be fine. So should you always go to the source, a primary source, which would be that one. Um, so that would be one source. Um, so yeah, I would just. Could I do different pictures, like from Instagram type of stuff? Yes, yes, yes. And maybe there's a video. Yeah, there's a lot of videos. Okay, so maybe a video. Um, try and use an official video though. Uh, maybe there was a documentary created about Disorganization. I mean, you, there's a lot you could do. Okay, cool. Okay. Is this helping you now? A little bit. I'm just wondering more as to the. I think I'm going to use a little more like both of because I'm thinking maybe being on the same line like doctor. Yeah, like that in the 1930s during the war and during the World War II. Ah, but all I have are like my mom's dances, like her words. Yeah. That would be one source. Mm -hmm. All right, absolutely. And she's asking a really good question. Um, you would do what's called an interview. Mm -hmm. And you would have a set of questions and you would interview her to find out um, it's an oral history. And so she would tell the story, or you could even contact a person you know, who lived during that time. Um, and have that person tell you their perspective, um, that's absolutely valid. Yep. But that would be one of others if you want some more. Yeah. Good. How about you? Are you thinking now anything? Yeah, I don't know. Like, let's like, get rid of my thing. Can I just like talk about how like, it affects other countries in Europe? Yes. I can. Yes. Yes. So do I gotta focus a lot on that? Yes. So if I do just put a lot, I gotta focus a lot on that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and so what you're gonna do is look at it from um, a little bit of a history. And 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 you might want to do the topics, the topical approach too, that's set with the chronology that in the nineteen fifties a drug was given to pregnant women. That was to you know cure morning sickness, but without enough longitudinal studies, they discovered that they were having you know um, birth defects. Um, but it wasn't discovered fast enough so that other pharmaceuticals or, or that company was selling it 
probably is going to be to the um, the highly developed countries, such as in Europe. So I mean, I, I don't know what the history was. So I don't even know if it was created in the United States. I think it was, but I don't. Ah. So did it start in Germany and then we picked it up here in the United well, States? We didn't pick it up. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Like how I watch movies. Like, like they started in Germany and they were like, "Hey, you know, this drug um, it helps morning sickness." And then they tried to come in a bunch of other countries. But then when they were trying to get to America, this doctor who was the first ever woman doctor in the FDA, they were like, "Hey, your evidence is that good. Put that out." Of here. Which I thought was interesting. Huh? Yes, that's excellent. Do that. Do yeah. that. All right. All right. And and what I like about that one is that it's from um, outside coming in, and so that's all part of. I mean, that's very timely with this whole COVID nineteen vaccination kind of thing, because they're being you know created all over the world. So like, can I, can I, can I like United States? Or no, you can mention the United States. Yeah, especially if there was somebody on the FDA who said, whoa, wait a minute, um, and, and challenged the research. Yeah, I think that's valuable. Yep, that's really good. All right. Um, let me show you a couple of other things, and then we'll, I'll turn off this so that um, I don't want to take up all their time. Um, okay, your rubrics. The same outline rubric will be used. All right. We'll, that's what I'll be using. But for this one, there is a rubric for delivering the speech that you need to be aware of. All right. This rubric, as you can imagine, is going to have some different focal points. All right. So the point distribution is going to change. All right. It's not going to be 100 points. So this goes up double, but look right here. This is now 35 points. So a big percentage is all about your research and your main points. It's really, really looking at your ability to uh, create a case, to uh, do your explanations, all right? Um, and then your conclusion 10. Now the delivery is still pretty high at 20, all right? But look down here. How do you use a PowerPoint? Okay, how do you actually use the PowerPoint? So when you um, submit your PowerPoint for grade, that's the one I'm going to have that you're going to be using. All right, unless you make some drastic changes and you want to send it to me, but your grade will stay the same. Um, and so I'm going to be evaluating your ability to um, um, make sure that you reference every single slide. So if the slide is shown, you gotta be talking about it some way. That you're gonna use the six by six rule, which I'm gonna tell you about next week, and I'm gonna show you a really important video for how to do PowerPoints. Uh, we are also going to be looking at um, how do you utilize um, your design, your graphics, okay? Um, all PowerPoint should have a black background or a very dark background so that the pictures and the images pop and they can be seen easily. Uh, pictures and images should be outlined so they don't float in the sky, so to speak. So I'm going to be talking to you a lot about graphic designs. And I'm going to be evaluating um, your PowerPoint as part of the actual delivery of your speech. Okay. Now this says five to six minutes. I said to you guys in your email, five to seven. Um, if you can get to six, that's even better because we're gonna have not so much your class, but some of the other classes, we have a lot of people. So we're gonna need to be conscious of time. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, we're gonna answer one question. You're gonna open up to questions. One of you will ask one question and you will answer it. And I want you to notice up here, how you answer the question is going to follow a technique where you repeat the question, 
you affirm the question itself by saying, wow, that's a great question. Or you affirm the person asking the question, you say, Jeremy, thank you for asking that question. Okay. And then you answer the question. So you don't answer the question right away. And the reason we use this um, approach, it's called RAA, repeat, affirm, answer, is because you actually are enabling your brain to do a cybernetic processing search to come up with a really good answer. If you don't know, you are always honest and say, I don't know the answer. All right, but it is a way to make sure that people may have, who are sitting way back in the back of a big auditorium, they may not have heard the question. So this is a way to make sure everybody's heard it. But here's the important part. Some of you are going to be in a circumstance where you will be delivering speeches to hostile crowds. I have. And there have been times when, because they wanted to shoot the messenger, which was me, because I had the message to deliver and they didn't like it, the questions when I opened it up were hostile. They were angry. They were, you know, pissed off and they were throwing me under the bus and how can you do this? And All right. And so the A, the first A, which is to affirm the question or affirm the person, is a de-escalation technique. It disarms the attacker. Because if you ask me a question that you think you're going to really get to me now, and I'm going to say, Ksenia, thank you for asking. That's a really tough question. I'm glad you asked it. And then I'm going to go through the process. And so I'll repeat it then. Now the R and the A can be mixed up, the first A, right? So sometimes you affirm before you repeat the question, um, but both of those need to be done before you answer the question, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be listening for you and that's gonna be a practice run because you're gonna really wanna do well for your final, which will be your final speech. You're going to have some questions. you got to be able to do that really well. All right. Okay. So that is that rubric. Now, let me show you the other rubric that's going to help you, which is a rubric for your PowerPoint. Oops. There we go. I need to pull it up. Now this rubric, uh, you either do a, it's either there or it's unacceptable, or it's there and it's well done, or um, et cetera. So this is how your PowerPoints are going to be graded. And these are the number of slides you should have. Um, actually, you should plan on having about 11 or 12 slides. Um, and then you are going to have a, a sources slide at the end, and you also have a slide for your images, the sources for your images. Now, this is where you may need to work with a writing lab so that you know how to do your source citations in APA format, right, or MLA. But you need to uh, not just list a URL. That's going to be really important. All right, and that's going to be your checklist for what how you do your PowerPoint. All right, so let me go in 